The eldest senior sister of Lin Jian sect, who ranked first in the category of rotten salted fish, was kicked by the master to the lower realm for cultivation after the last junior martial uncle flew away. In order to have a stable and long dot term life with rotten salted fish, Su Qing Tian stepped on the top and abused the dregs, and the once gloomy and hazy general's mansion changed its appearance. My uncle, who was injured in the war, suddenly came to life. Abandoned martial arts and became the top scorer in high school for the second uncle of one. The poisoned and unconscious uncle suddenly woke up. Grandpa, with white hair, looked at his lucky little bun happily and couldn't close his mouth with a smile. But the little granddaughter had a melancholic expression on her face. The beautiful little brother she liked, only the merit and golden light could dispel the entangled demon blood curse all over her body. Master. Are you still showing up poorly? Su Qing Tian was aggrieved. Once a salted fish instantly turns into a worker. Unexpectedly, before she could make a move, the little brother, who was supposed to be haunted by a fierce ghost, braved the shining and glaring merit to beg for a hug. Su Qing Tian angrily said, Go away, don't hit me. Keywords of the novel Playing rotten little Dr. Immortal popular throughout the dynasty through fortune-telling without pop-ups, playing rotten little Dr. Immortal, popular throughout the dynasty through fortune-telling. Download the complete set of TXT, playing rotten little Dr. Immortal, popular throughout the dynasty through fortune-telling. Latest chapters for reading. Chapter 1. Soul-Piercing Baby. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1 Soul-Piercing Baby, Look, this girl looks so agile. If I were to be raised as a daughter. In. Law, it would definitely be a good deal. The sharp female voice exploded in Su Qingtian's ear, making her already stiff and painful head even more painful, with the most painful being her small buttocks. Master, you really have such a ruthless heart when kicking her down, you can't be gentle. Why does her but hurt so much? Su Qing Tian slowly opened her eyes, and many figures appeared in her hazy vision. The closest person to her was a man. He was dressed in patched brown, with grass shoes hanging from his toes that were about to fall apart. He was stomping on the bench under him, sipping heavily on alcohol. There were two female dolls standing in front of them, with their hands tied up, judging from their bodies that they were in their teens. The man drank a lot, with a pair of lewd eyes on his black and red face constantly scrutinizing the girls. His mouth was full of yellow teeth, crunching peanuts and occasionally spitting on the ground. You don't like this, look at this. Standing beside him was a man and a woman, with a thin and sharp face, dressed in a deep blue dress, in their thirties. She pulled one of the girls and pushed it in front of the man. This girl has a handsome face and a big butt, so she's easy to raise. As she spoke, she flipped the girl over and lifted her top, revealing a section of her waistline and lower buttocks. The girl couldn't bear such humiliation and immediately screamed and twisted in fear. Be quiet. A woman couldn't help but slap her head, and she would never hurt her face, after all, she is a good product that can be sold for money. It's your honor to see you. Grandpa. If you keep making noise, I'll scratch your face and sell you to work as a laborer in a kiln. These words were naturally meant to scare the girl, but she was still young and immediately scared to the point where she dared only sob softly and was at the mercy of the woman. Pulling the girl for half a day, the man who was drinking remained silent. The woman pushed the girl away and then pulled another one to continue selling. And this one, it looks the best and the price is a bit expensive. I guarantee she must be a beautiful embryo. Even if you get tired of it, as long as it doesn't hurt your face, you can resell it without losing money. The girls were guided back and forth by the woman-like goods, one by one pulled up to the man to show off. They have no choice but to cry, and can only wait quietly for the fate given by others. The man's slightly uninteresting gaze turned twice and finally landed on Su Qing Tian in the back. The woman understood and immediately showed a pleasing smile, grabbing Su Qing Tian from the ground and approaching the man. Su Qing Tian, who was pulled up, 
suddenly realized something was wrong. How did she become a dwarf? Both feet were almost on the ground, and the head could only lean against the woman's waist. This doll is the smartest one I've caught in recent years. I had planned to keep it for a few years before selling it. If you like it, the price is negotiable. Under the manipulation of the woman, Su Qingtian's chaotic mind gradually became clear. The memory of the original owner slowly revealed, allowing her to understand the current situation of falling to the ground. The original owner had the same name as Su Qingtian, and her biological mother was Xiao Hongyan, the legitimate daughter of the general of Xinguo. She fell in love with the poor scholar Su Zheng and married him. Su Zheng was indeed talented, and with the help of his father in law, he gradually rose to become the prime minister of a country. Xiao Hongyan did not conceive for a long time after getting married. She felt guilty to her husband for not being able to inherit the family line for the Su family due to her physical condition. Therefore, she took the initiative to propose that Su Zheng's cousin by Ruoxue become a concubine. In order to maintain his good husband's appearance in front of General Xiao, Su Zheng pretended to be deeply in love and refused to take a concubine. But surprisingly, it was Su Zheng who had been drugging his wife Xiao Hongyan, making it difficult for her to conceive and causing her body to gradually weaken. However, the heavens finally opened their eyes, and Xiao Hongyan finally became pregnant. However, at this time, her body was too weak due to medication, and she struggled to bear Su Qing Tian ten months later. Seeing Xiao Hongyan giving birth smoothly, Su Jing couldn't sit still. As soon as Su Qing Tian was full moon, Su Jing secretly manipulated it, causing the emperor to order the transfer of General Zhao's family to the border to guard the pass and keep him away from his daughter Xiao Hongyan. Less than half a year after her father's family left, Xiao Hongyan, who was bedridden, died of a serious illness, leaving only her lonely legitimate daughter Su Qing Tian behind. As soon as the mourning period passed, Bai Ruoxue married into the Su family in a grand manner with her red makeup ten miles away. As a housewife, her appearance at the time of her wedding surpassed that of her original wife. And when she entered, she brought a adopted daughter who was less than two years old, and later became the legitimate daughter of the Su family. Su Lingxian There is no other reason, the adopted daughter was the biological daughter of Su Zheng and Bai Ruoxue before their marriage. At this moment, Su Zheng was no longer burdened by his original wife and no longer suppressed by his father. In law, and finally revealed his true face. Actually, Su Zheng had planned everything since he met Xiao Hongyan. He just needs to rely on the Xiao family to climb to his dream high position, then eliminate various obstacles around him, and finally bring his beloved and daughter back to his side. In the eyes of outsiders, Su Zheng and Bai Shi, who fulfilled their dreams, were as affectionate as their original spouses and were praised by everyone in the capital as a couple of Mandarin ducks. Under the love of Su Zheng, Bai gave birth to three sons in a row, completely securing her position as the prime minister's wife. Su Zheng also had some means in the court, and even gave a decree to the Bai family who filled the house. Now, the Bai family is the object of flattery for everyone in the capital, with smooth sailing and smooth sailing. At this time, people had already forgotten the original heroic and heroic Xiao Hongyan, as well as the family of General Xiao who fought for the country. The true legitimate daughter Su Qing Tian has also become a burden that everyone despises. The whole family is fawning on the mother and son of the Bai family, and the servants do not care about the life or death of the little girl, often using leftover food from cold meals to send her away. Su Qing Tian is still young, and on weekdays, besides searching for leftover food to fill her stomach, she often hides in the corners of the small dark room, daydreaming. Because the children of the Bai family in the mansion would come and bully her from time to time, and often play tricks on her with servants, leaving her in a state of embarrassment and nowhere to hide. That day, she went to the small kitchen to steal pastries. She had just eaten half a piece of rice bean cake before fainting. When she woke up, it was already another Su Qing Tian. It is obvious that someone in the mansion deliberately wanted to make the original owner disappear forever. Unfortunately, 
the original owner was allergic to hallucinogens and fell asleep, which allowed her to use this body to live in this small world. Hmm. Wait a minute. How old is the original owner? Five or six years old. Su Ching Tian slowly grinned and smiled brilliantly. She was originally the eldest senior sister of the Ling Sword sect, with outstanding talent and excellent understanding. She had only practiced for more than a hundred years and had reached the stage of crossing the tribulation. As long as her merits were complete, she could soar. But she was also notorious for being lazy. After entering the period of crossing tribulations, she wandered between Xianyu and leaping in the sect for five hundred years, but her merit was not as good as that of a young master in the Golden Elixir period. Master Lingxiao couldn't bear it anymore and kicked her into this small world, demanding that she collect merits before returning to the upper realm. But to her surprise, she dressed up as a small bun of five or six years old, unable to carry on her shoulders or carry on her hands, naturally unable to collect merit. Lie flat. Xiaochuanzi is at the age of eating, drinking, playing, and having fun. How could he do such a hard job? She wants to enjoy the stage of being a little nanny well, just think about it and feel happy. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Little Immortals Save Lives. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 3. Encountering a Little Immortal. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3. Encountering a Little Immortal Lu Xiangzhao looked at the majestic gate of the county government office, feeling very conflicted in his heart. At the thought of so many children waiting to be rescued in the cellar, he gritted his teeth and took a deep breath, walking towards the county government gate. When the county magistrate followed Lu Xiangzhao with a group of constables to the small wooden house, he was immediately startled by the scene before him. Two men and one woman were hung upside down from a tree, surrounded by a circle of children. They held stones and dirt in their hands and threw them fiercely at them, cursing and throwing them at the same time. When the Yaman runner lowered the three people from the tree, it was only then that they found that the three people with bruises and swollen faces had already passed out. The county magistrate arranged for people to count the number of children carefully while also having the constable escort a group of children safely down the mountain. The county magistrate himself stayed behind and collected evidence together with the constable. Watching the child safely descend the mountain, a big stone in Lu Xiangzhou's heart slowly landed, and his gaze fell on Su Qing Tian among the children. She raised funds for a while and was about to step forward, only to find the little fairy walking towards her. Little fairy. Lu Xiangzhou respectfully called out in a low voice, but just as he was about to bow, he was interrupted by Su Qing Tian raising his hand. You and Lu Chunhua each have a chance encounter which can ensure the stability of future generations. Unfortunately, only you have kept your promise. Because of your kindness, I will give you a few tips. At this moment, Lu Xiangzhou realized that the little immortal was not really going to punish the two of them, and he also breathed a sigh of relief for his cousin who had fled from the battlefield. Tomorrow, Hunter Zhang will take his matchmaker to propose marriage to Lu Chunhua's family, but the Lu Chunhua family naturally disagrees. But the Zhang family has a life dot saving kindness towards the Lu family, so they will force you to marry Hunter Zhang. Lu Xiangzhou was slightly taken aback. Her parents were both deceased and she was raised at Lu Chunhua's house since childhood. From memory onwards, she worked day and night, and was named Lu Chunhua's cousin, but in fact, she was enslaved by the Lu family. I originally thought that for the sake of relatives, my uncle could find a proper marriage for me. I didn't expect to end up like this. The little immortal mentioned tomorrow's matter with just one word, and Lu Xiangzhou urgently looked at Su Qing Tian and asked. How do I do it? Su Qing Tian smiled and said, you don't need to do anything. Just agree to this marriage. Lu Xiangzhou suddenly choked up and didn't know how to react. If you don't like it, you can also choose not to marry. As long as you get married, you will be able to live in harmony and love with your husband. 
In less than three years, not only will your life be rich and prosperous, but at least you will have no worries about food and clothing. If you want to have a smooth and safe life in the future, take this opportunity to sever ties with Lu Chunhua's family, otherwise the family will have no peace. When Lu Xiangzhao wanted to ask something more, Su Qing Tian had already turned around and left. Su Qing Tian followed the children to the Xiaocheng mansion. Three criminals were taken to prison, and Lu Xiangzhao, who was older, was summoned by the county magistrate to inquire. The little dolls were arranged in a larger room in the backyard of the county government. The county magistrate's wife is a kind and kind person. It is said that she ordered someone to prepare easily digestible food early on and distribute it to the hungry children. Watching the children wolfing down their bowls with their small hands, the county magistrate's wife wiped the corners of her eyes with some sadness. There were a large number of abducted dolls this time. The county magistrate's police station had yamen runners and captains post notices to notify those who had lost their children to come to the county government to check their information. At the same time, they brought registered residents and other ID cards to the county government to prove their relationship. Because some dolls are too small to even remember their own names, only their baby names. People flocked to receive the news. Soon, most of the children in the backyard were picked up by their parents. The remaining children were either sold by their parents due to family difficulties or abducted from other towns to this place. The county magistrate's wife comforted the remaining children to sleep peacefully inside the house, while the county magistrate was busy writing letters to colleagues in nearby towns, asking them to send someone to pick up the children as soon as possible. Su Qing Tian was also eating and drinking, lying on the soft bed, feeling the golden light of merit surging from all directions. Countless golden lights poured into this small body, but it seemed to fill an endless abyss without any sound. This is precisely the main reason why Su Qing Tian has been flaunting herself. The merit required for her flying is hundreds or even thousands of times that of others. Ordinary merit does not have any effect on her, and it is impossible to even enhance her spiritual body ability. The little girl's mouth was deflated, and according to the current progress, she may not be able to fly in a few hundred years, so she decided to keep lying flat in the future. Since you want to be a salted fish, first find someone to be responsible for her food, drink, and salad. Su Zheng, this scumbag, is unreliable, so naturally he has to go to Fengqing to find his grandfather and a few uncles. Having made up her mind, Su Qing Tian slowly closed her eyes and fell asleep. When Lu Xiangzhao on the Yaman Hall explained all the situation to the county magistrate, it was already the morning of the next day. She had just returned to the entrance of Liujia village when she saw from a distance the village aunties gathered together loudly discussing something. One of them saw her and immediately urged, Vanilla, hurry. Go home. Hunter Zhang proposed marriage to your sister. Lu Xiangzhao let out a thud in his heart. It seems that she has really met a little fairy. Just Lu Xiangzhao walked step by step towards the familiar thatched cottage, without making a choice in his heart. Su Qing Tian woke up close to noon and found that she was the only one left in the entire room. Leaving the room, I happened to meet a nanny. Little girl, you're up. Grandma saw her walking unsteadily and quickly squatted in front of her, looking kindly at Su Qing Tian. Madam asked me to call you for lunch together. Su Qing Tian nodded obediently and followed her grandmother to the side hall. As soon as she stepped into the room, she could smell the delicious food. Goo goo goo, the hunger protest immediately spread from the belly, which also attracted the county magistrate and Mrs. Hu. The two couldn't help but chuckle softly. Madame Hu stood up and gently held Su Qingtian's small hand, taking her to the dining table. Although Su Qingtian is five years old now, she has not been able to get enough food and clothing all year round, and her body is only three years old. Su Qing Tian looked at the wooden stool, which was not much shorter than her own height, and suddenly felt a bit puzzled. Suddenly, her small body was lifted up, and Hu County Magistrate lifted Su Qing Tian up under her armpit and placed her on a wooden stool. I'm starving. 
Mrs. Hu placed a bowl of yellow egg custard in front of Su Ching Tian and smiled, first, have some egg custard to warm your stomach. The little girl slept for a long time, and the master almost came to see you. Feeling the kindness of the two, Su Ching smiled sweetly and unkindly buried her head in eating. As she watched the little girl devour her food, Mrs. Hu's eyes were filled with joy. One of her subordinates consciously touched her slightly swollen belly, while the other hand kept picking vegetables for Su Ching Tian. Outside the door, the butler held a brocade box in his hand and quickly entered the house from the corridor. Master, the butler said with a cheerful tone, this is the white jade guanine sent by Miss Luer. Madam who immediately put down her chopsticks and looked at the brocade box in the butler's hand with a happy smile. End of this chapter Chapter 4 This guanine statue is not clean. You are listening at novelfull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 5 Black Talismans Hidden in Guanine You are listening at novelfull.audio the source has no content or has errors. Chapter 6 A Tragic Beginning You are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 6 A Tragic Beginning Su Ching Tian looked at Hu County Magistrate, nodded, and the two small tugs on her head shook slightly. Yes. You must have a clear understanding of why she did this. I do know. The magistrate of Hu County looked tired and walked leisurely. I have clearly refused multiple times and have tried to avoid her everywhere in the past two years, but I didn't expect. I didn't expect her to be so ruthless. Killing my son and harming my wife is such a heinous thing that she can really take action without hesitation. The thought of his wife and children's tragic death made his heart ache faintly. The man took a deep breath and slowly sat in the armchair his sharp gaze showing a fierce, more restrained look. After all, that is the daughter that the uncle loves the most, and this matter still needs to be considered in the long run. The talisman I gave to Madame not only had a sense of peace, but also had a strong backlash, Su Ching Tian explained to County Magistrate who, those who have a murderous heart towards Madame and her child in her arms will be gradually consumed to death by their own resentment. Upon hearing these words, County magistrate who couldn't help but be taken aback and slowly stood up to look at Hu Su Ching Tian. You're right, that person's life is not long. Su Ching Tian looked straight at the trembling eyes of Su County magistrate and said a sentence that made his heart skip a beat. If you want to save her, just burn the talisman I gave to Madam. Madam and the child can still be safe, but whether someone will harm them in the future is not something I can control. She can calculate everything in the world, but people cannot see clearly. Everyone has to bear the consequences of their own choices. No matter whether the consequences are good or bad. At this point, the choice that who county magistrate makes is entirely up to himself. After listening, the man stood for a long time. Finally, he bowed deeply toward Su Ching Tian. After finishing the work, Su Ching Tian resigned from Mr. Hu and his wife and set off to Fengqing to search for the whereabouts of his grandfather's family. County magistrate who wanted to keep the little immortal for a few more days to ensure that his wife and child were safe, but he didn't want to go against the fairy's wishes. He called the safest groom in the family to prepare a warm carriage and arranged for Sheriff Nye to personally escort him. Although Nye Quan was not aware of the strange events happening in the back house of the county government, as a constable, he still noticed that the county magistrate's gaze at the little girl was filled with gratitude and an indescribable respect. Seeing the county magistrate's wife reluctantly holding Su Qingtian's hand and touching it again and again, the man quickly put down the horse stool. Su Qingtian didn't love the overflowing emotions in the world, and her face remained indifferent as she looked at her. Although her face was cold, Mrs. Hu saw a hint of softness in her sparkling eyes. The woman smiled slightly. If Xia Qingxian can't find her grandfather, she must come back. I'll keep your room. Su Qing Tian pinched her fingers and calculated that Xiao Hongyan's father must be flattering, but seeing that his wife couldn't easily refute the other party's kindness, she nodded, 
turned around, and climbed up the horse stool with a snort. Nye Kwan looked at the clumsy little nanny, neither helping nor not. Fortunately, Su Ching Tian climbed up a few times and took out dim sum from his sleeve to eat. Lord Hu took out five tails of silver from his pocket and handed it to Nye Kwan, instructing him to take good care of the baby on the way and return immediately in case of any accidents. So, under the repeated instructions of his wife, Nye Kwan drove the carriage towards the direction of Fengcheng. There is a three-dot-day slow journey in Fengcheng here, and Nye Kwan is still worried that this little baby crying on the way will delay the time. However, to his surprise, the little baby sat in the carriage without crying or making a fuss. After finishing eating, sleeping, and eating, except for occasionally getting off the car to take a nap, the rest of the time was extremely obedient. Nye Kwan, who was driving ahead, felt strange. I also have a four- or five-year-old daughter in my family, who is always disliked by both chickens and dogs as a little scumbag. If the family can't even watch her, she falls over a bowl and is quiet every day except when she falls asleep. He thought that the little girl in the car must have been suffering from the human traffickers, unable to eat enough or wear warm clothes. This would finally provide a safe and warm place to live, which is why she slept so peacefully. Taking advantage of the little girl's quietness, Nye Kwan couldn't help but accelerate his speed. The carriage raced rapidly along the official road, shortening the original distance. As the sunset approached, he could already see Fengcheng from afar. Nye Kwan, sweating profusely, parked his carriage at a post station outside the city to rest. He looked up and took a big sip of herbal tea, then prepared to bring the fresh tea he had asked the shopkeeper for to Su Ching Tian. As soon as the curtain of the carriage was lifted, I watched the little boy slowly open his eyes, and a pair of misty big eyes looked over in confusion. Nye Kwan immediately thought of his own crazy little rascal when he met these loving and pitiful big eyes, and his heart melted when he thought of the many days when Su Ching Tian was abducted by someone. His voice also softened a lot. Little girl, do you know where your grandfather lives in Fengcheng? Fengcheng is not like a small county under the jurisdiction of its own adults. This city covers an area with a large population, and it may not be easy to find a family among this magnificent crowd. Su Qing Tian took the tea handed by Nye Quan and drank it, feeling clear in her mind. She got up and climbed over, sticking her little head out along the open car curtain. The scene before her left her slightly stunned. Not far away, a grey-white air hovered over Fengcheng, seemingly bustling with people, but in fact, it had already been enveloped by a thick layer of stagnant air. Somewhere in the southwest direction of the city, there is even more black air entangled, and the sky here is stained with color by this black air. Su Qingtian's eyebrows furrowed slightly, and her small hand hidden under her sleeve quickly pinched and calculated. The direction was immediately clear to her heart, and she also looked up again and took the opportunity to look over. Yoha. The place where the evil black aura was tainted was actually the residence of the original owner, Su Qingtian's grandfather. This aura is not a small sorcery encountered by the county magistrate's wife. It is a sinister aura that can spread from the southwest corner and envelop the entire Fengqing city. It is probably not a easy to deal with major demons. Su Qing Tian pursed her lips. Master, is this because she is afraid of continuing to mess around and has arranged such a miserable start? The little girl frowned and sighed, looking completely pitiful and ignorant in Nye Quan's eyes. The man's heart suddenly became heavy, it seemed that Xiaowa didn't remember clearly, and he would have to accompany her for a few more days. With both hands clasped under Su Qingtian's armpit, Nye Quan picked up the little baby. He thought that since he had to search from the beginning, it was better to rest first. After all, he had been rushing all day, and even searching the whole city couldn't find a clue. Uncle. As soon as Xiaowa was in her arms, she reached out her little hand and pointed towards the direction of Fengcheng, saying clearly and confidently, My grandfather's house is right there. Looking at her fingertips, Nye Quan noticed that she was referring to the southwest corner of Fengcheng, 
and it didn't seem like she was pointing randomly. After hesitating for a while and repeatedly asking for answers in the same direction, he rode his carriage into Fengcheng, followed the cobblestone road to the south of the city, and then turned west. After entering the city, Su Qing Tian felt a piercing sensation all over her body. Her spiritual roots were excellent, and even if her merits could not be fully achieved, her innate aptitude would not change. After entering the lower world, she also had a bit of sensitivity. The evil of Fengcheng is likely to hover for decades, and a foul odor wafts throughout the entire town space. Su Qing's sweet index finger waved in the air, blocking the foul smell. End of this chapter Chapter 7 The Misfortune of the Xiao Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 8 Recognition of Grandparents and Grandchildren You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Recognition of Grandparents and Grandchildren Bang the mahogany table in the outer room was violently shattered by internal force and fell to the ground with a clatter, bringing a moment of silence inside. Our Xiao family has always been loyal and patriotic, and we are by no means the disaster star of M.O. country in his population. Xiao Yi Chen As a child of the Xiao family, you believe in nonsense. Damn it! Do you deserve to attribute Nanar's illness to this ridiculous reason, your big brother? General Xiao angrily and coldly cursed at Xiao Yi Chen, and a sense of solemnity gradually spread in the room. The servants knew that General Xiao was anxious, so they hurriedly continued to change the cold water and wipe the young master's body. Xiao Yi Chen, who had been scolded, opened his mouth and tried to refute but got stuck in his throat. In the end, he didn't say a word. He used to not believe in fate, but the various accidents of the Xiao family over the years have forced him to believe it. Now, only his father is still holding on to the Xiao family. One day, all the members of the Xiao family will die silently in this city. Just as there was a dead silence inside the house, the soldiers stood outside with jade plaques. General, there is a girl outside the mansion seeking to see you. The soldiers held up jade plaques in both hands and continued in front of General Xiao, she claims to be your granddaughter, this is a token. General Xiao and Xiao Yi Chen were taken aback and immediately turned their heads to look at the soldiers outside the door. The old man quickly arrived at the door and took the jade plaque from the soldiers' hands. This it's really the beautiful jade plaque. General Xiao excitedly held the jade plaque in his hand and suddenly remembered that when he was demoted, his daughter Hong Yen was experiencing childbirth at home. As a father, he didn't even have a chance to see his granddaughter, so he was driven out of the city by the army. A few years have passed, and the news about my daughter has been decreasing. The people sent to Beijing to inquire have either been driven away or left without a return. During these days, there was no peace at home and he had been wanting to arrange for someone to go to the capital again, but he had never had a suitable opportunity. I didn't expect, where are people? General Xiao suddenly realized something was wrong. His granddaughter came to Fengqing alone with a jade plaque. Did something happen to her daughter? It's still outside the gate. The family rules of Xiao Mansion are strict, and without orders, no one can enter without permission. Hurry up. Hurry up and welcome the people into the mansion. Taking another glance at his grandson who was still feverish, General Xiao instructed Xiao Yi Chen to take good care of the child and hurriedly rushed to the front hall. After a while, Nye Quan followed the little girl to the Xiao mansion, and when he saw General Xiao himself, he still felt a bit dizzy. General Xiao saw Su Qingtian's small face, which was almost as rosy as a red face, at a glance. His daughter was as cute and obedient as this girl when she was young, and without further questioning, she immediately recognized her granddaughter. He saw his thin and weak body empty under the sleeves of a wide coat, and the old general felt extremely sorry. He quickly called for a table to eat. The old man touched the little girl's furry head while talking to Nye Quan. It was only then that he realized that the little girl had been abducted from the capital all the way to Linxian, and was almost rescued before being sold. 
The county magistrate of Lin Xian is also a kind-hearted person, and arranged for Nia Quan to escort his granddaughter to Fengcheng to find him. After taking another sip of hot soup, Su Qing enjoyed a comfortable meal and suddenly felt like she had come to life. She leaned back in the chair and looked up at the two people who were chatting happily. Her gaze fell on General Xiao and slowly began to scrutinize. The old man with white hair and a broad and upright demeanor, his short and thick beard covering most of his face, and his eyes that had gone through the battlefield can be described as bright and lively, capable of killing people with just one glance. Su Qing nodded sweetly. Fortunately, the old man had this decisive and righteous aura to protect his body. Otherwise, the filthy aura around him would have devoured him completely, and he would have ended up dying inexplicably. Xia Qingxian, can you have enough to eat? Mr. Xiao asked the little person in a soft voice, as if afraid that his usually sharp voice would scare the weak little girl. His slightly cloudy eyes were full of careful exploration, and his innate blood ties carried infinite love in his eyes. This child has never seen him since birth, and Mr. Xiao is afraid that the young child will be shaken by the murderous atmosphere in this mansion, making it difficult for him to adapt and thus separate from him. His gaze fell on Su Qingtian's wrist, which was exposed at the cuffs, and there were still small wounds on the pale and slender surface. Old Master Xiao let out a sigh in his heart, not knowing for a moment whether to thank the kidnapper for bringing the doll in front of him or to angrily condemn those unscrupulous filthy people. The food is appetizing. Would you like Grandpa to let the kitchen cook you some dim sum? I have been busy discussing with Nia Quan all along, but I haven't paid much attention to how well the little one eats. As a grandfather, I feel extremely distressed. Apart from stuffing some delicious food, I don't know how to get along. Unexpectedly, as soon as the words fell, the little girl in front of her smiled sweetly. Her clear big eyes showed a hopeful expression and she nodded heavily. As he watched his granddaughter squint into crescent-shaped eyes, Mr. Xiao couldn't help but chuckle a few times and quickly ordered someone to make some sweet treats that children like to eat. With a smile on his face, Mr. Xiao finally felt a rare sense of relief in recent times. His family affairs were constant, and even military affairs were pressing on him. It had been a long time since he could smile so freely. Nia Quan saw that the two of them had successfully recognized each other, and his worries were relieved. For a moment, the atmosphere inside the room was just right. Suddenly, a sprint ran towards the house from far to near, and a man hurriedly broke through the door. When he saw Mr. Xiao, he immediately walked forward. The newcomer was in his early forties, wearing a dark grey-coloured silk dress and no weapons on his body. Although his face showed anxiety, he exuded a sense of military brutality from top to bottom. It seems that this should be a soldier in the army, and at the same time, he is very close to the Xiao family. General. The man stood in front of Mr. Xiao, clasping his fists and bowing. In his spare time, he caught sight of Su Qing Tian and hesitated to speak. Young master, please come, young master. I'm afraid it might be. The smile instantly solidified on Mr. Zhao's face, and he felt a buzzing sound in his mind, plunging himself into immense grief. I originally intended to send my obedient granddaughter to heaven, but this should be a sign of good luck for their Xiao family. However, I didn't expect that they could still not change their fate of losing their grandson. He didn't believe in fate. As someone who spent most of his life fighting on the battlefield, he only believed in the knife in his hand and his companions around him. Destiny cannot determine the outcome of a battle. But now the national teacher once made a firm statement in the main hall, saying that the Xiao family was born as a disaster star. His majesty only believed in fate without investigating the truth, which was why he expelled the Xiao family from the capital. For so many years, I have been diligently guarding the border and teaching my children to lead the army in battle, all in order to break the theory of disaster stars. The children in Ku's family have been injured repeatedly and fell ill for no reason. Now that they have gone to the house, even their youngest grandson cannot escape misfortune. At the thought of his dying grandson, the old man's hard-won beliefs began to crumble. 
End of this chapter. Chapter 9. Strange Black Objects. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Strange Black Objects Su Ching Tian looked up at the old man's uncontrollable compassion, which constantly emanated from his body. It was precisely because of this that the originally protective aura was shattered, and the murky aura was disturbed by black air around him. Black energy entangled with positive energy, and gradually began to crawl towards the old man's straight back. The little girl frowned in displeasure. She had finally found a long dot term meal ticket, but after only having one meal, how could it seem like it was about to end? Hey, my master is really cunning. Isn't this forcing me to do it myself? A soft little hand gently patted Mr. Zhao's back, and the old man turned his head to see a pair of clear and transparent eyes, with a smile in their eyes, looking at him. The originally suffocated chest suddenly opened up, and the accumulated depression for many years dissipated instantly. Grandpa. The milky voice paired with the sweet smile of the little girl made anyone feel comfortable and content. As Su Qin Tian watched Mr. Zhao's black aura dissipate, he spoke slowly, word by word, Grandpa is hungry. Let Grandpa eat Qin Tian's pastry. Speaking, he picked up a piece of cake and placed it in Mr. Zhao's hand. Watching the caring and affectionate little girl, the old man couldn't help but soften his heart. He looked down at the pastry in his hand and thought of his own grandson. Good girl, how about going with your grandfather to see your cousin? Su Qing nodded and opened her arms as if she wanted to hug. Although Nye Quan at the table only heard a few words, he keenly sensed that something had happened in the mansion. Now that the county magistrate's arrangements had been handled properly, it was time for him to bid farewell. Mr. Xiao picked up Su Qing Tian in his arms and took a few steps to see off Nye Quan before hastily turning a corner and heading towards his grandson's bedroom. The milk ball in his arms was as light as nothing, and Mr. Xiao couldn't help but hold it tightly, afraid that the strong night wind would damage the little baby. Su Qing Tian obediently lay on the shoulder of the old man, even though the old general walked with a swift figure, she still felt the faint fear in his sturdy body. Grandpa is not afraid, with Zaya Kingshin around, cousin will be fine. With each soothing sound, the cold around him was dispelled, and the little milk voice wiped away the gloom in the old man's heart. Even with such a thoughtful delivery girl in his arms, Mr. Xiao couldn't help but accelerate his pace for fear of not seeing his grandson. Stepping into the brightly lit courtyard, the servants hurriedly entered and exited with anxious expressions on their faces. Seeing the owner greet him in a muffled voice, he hurriedly went to do his own thing. Mr. Xiao walked into the bedroom with Xiao Qing Tian in his arms, and happened to see the doctor beside the bed retracting his pulse diagnosis hand and shaking his head slowly at Xiao Yi Chen beside him. Dr. Sun, are you sure? Xiao Yi Chen excitedly grabbed Dr. Sun's wrist and said urgently, Nanner. Nanner can definitely be saved. Take a look again. Be sure to take a careful look. Dr. Sun showed a hint of regret and heartache on his face. Even medical professionals did not want to see such a young child die before their eyes, but he knew his medical skills were limited and he was powerless at the moment. Xiao Gongsuan's high fever for several days caused organ failure in his body, and even if he called the imperial physician in the capital, he would be powerless to recover. Even if it's scary, as a doctor, he must tell the truth, and the bearded man sighs softly. Below. I couldn't continue to say these words. Upon hearing this, Xiao Yi Chen slowly let go of his hand and collapsed into a wheelchair, feeling dejected. The cold wind rushed into the room, and the doctor turned around to see the dusty Mr. Xiao. He got up and picked up his medicine box, pursed his lips, and finally didn't say a word more. He nodded at the old general and left the room. Su Qing Tian has been observing this house all the way, and evil spirits have permeated every corner of the mansion. Every person who comes and goes has some traces of it. At this moment, as she entered the room, the evil energy that had been three times stronger suddenly increased more than ten times. She couldn't help but click a few times as she looked at the environment infected by the evil energy. 
This should be the place with the heaviest evil energy in the Shao Mansion. It seems that the people behind the scenes are determined to destroy the entire Shao family, otherwise they wouldn't have dealt such a heavy blow to a child. If an ordinary person lives in such an environment, they will fall seriously ill and die in a few days. This little cousin was able to hold his breath thanks to the protection of the Shao family's ancestors, which allowed the family to survive for five years. Grandpa, Ching Tian wants to come down. The crisp voice of the young child did not reach Mr. Zhao's ears. He was immersed in the sorrow of losing his grandson, and all his attention was focused on the little person on the bed. Upon seeing this, Su Ching Tian had no choice but to twist her body and struggle down from Grandpa Zhao's arms. When the old man realized that his arms were empty, his granddaughter had already climbed onto the bed and reached out to her grandson. Mr. Xiao quickly stepped forward to stop the little girl, fearing that he would pass on his illness to his granddaughter. Xiao Qing, be good. Come down quickly. Your cousin Nan is sick, you can't get close. Xiao Yi Chen, who was decadent on the side, heard his father's voice and then looked up at the unfamiliar little child. The little girl on the bed stretched out a small pink fist and punched the little boy lying in bed hard in the chest. Now, both the father and son of the Xiao family were shocked. No one expected that the first meeting between the recently returned granddaughter and grandson would evolve into such a scene. Su Qingtian's eyes stared straight at Xiao Nan's chest. The punch just now made the evil spirit hovering over him loosen, but the other party was very stubborn and had no intention of giving up on this body. On her cute little face, Su Qing Tian raised her eyebrows slightly, and in the surprised gaze of the adults, she fiercely punched her second fist. Now Mr. Xiao finally regained his composure and quickly picked up Su Qing Tian, who had caused trouble. He couldn't bear to blame his ignorant granddaughter, but also felt sorry for his grandson who was bedridden. At this moment, a black substance slowly emanated through Xiao Nan's chest. The bright lights in the room illuminated this unidentified object very clearly. It rises slowly and eerily into the air, making the people inside the room sweat and hair stand up. What is this? What is this? Xiao Yi Chen was closest to the bed, staring intently at the black substance floating in the air with wide eyes. He saw this mass slowly detach from his nephew's body, becoming increasingly thick and light. The evil and evil energy. Su Qing Tian squinted her eyes in her grandfather's arms as she watched the scattered materials in the room. Her small hands hurriedly dug up and down her sleeves before finally grabbing a handful of yellow talismans and stuffing them into her grandfather's hand. Grandpa, when that thing completely comes out of my cousin's body, I'll stick these yellow talismans all over the room. Mr. Xiao held on to a thick stack of yellow talismans in his hand, his mind still feeling a bit confused for a moment but the material that actually appeared in front of him was clear and could not be concealed. Evil energy Although this is the first time the veteran has seen this object, he can immediately conclude that it must be something that harms his grandson. He turned his head to look at his granddaughter, whose eyes were as clear as spring water, without any hidden evil intentions. End of this chapter Chapter 10 This monster has no entity you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 10 This monster has no entity. General Xiao drove out the servants from the outer room and lowered the curtain of the inner room to block his view. As Sun Tzu turned around, more and more black substances emerged from his body, gradually forming a faint shape. Grasping Xiao Yi Chen's wheelchair and taking his son aside, General Xiao held his granddaughter in one hand and prepared with a yellow talisman in the other. Until the last trace of black material jumped out of Xiao Nan's chest, a monster-shaped black mist appeared in mid-air. Grandpa, it's now. Su Qing Tian seized the right moment, and Mr. Xiao exerted his internal strength, quickly sticking the yellow talisman in his hand to different positions in the room, most of which was around the bed. Zizi. For a moment, there was a rustling sound inside the house, and Mr. Xiao guarded his little child and looked around with caution at the yellow talismans. Each yellow talisman was playing its own role, and the sound was the crisp lightning strike they made. 
Surrounded by yellow talismans, the black substance suspended in the air was struck by brittle lightning waves, which were numerous and gradually enveloped in the sphere formed by the lightning strikes. Grandpa, you can't stay here anymore. Take your cousin out of this room immediately. As she spoke, the little girl immediately got off her grandfather's body and, under the gaze of Mr. Xiao, reached out and pushed Xiao Yi Chen's wheelchair towards the door. Xiao Yi Chen, who was so shocked that he didn't know what had happened, grabbed the handrail tightly. Why is this little girl so strong? She pushed the man weighing around a hundred pounds onto the wheelchair effortlessly, as fast as if he was about to fly. Mr. Xiao didn't want to fall behind and hurriedly left with Xiao Nan, who was still unconscious. As soon as he stepped out of the room, the door closed tightly with a loud bang. Su Qing Tian took out a stack of yellow talismans from her sleeve and stuffed them into her grandfather's hand. There was no need for the little girl to speak. Mr. Xiao immediately pasted the yellow talisman in his hand all over the corners outside the house. The servants on duty outside stood inside the courtyard, completely unaware of what had happened as they watched the master series of operations. But the rules of the Xiao family were strict, and the servants only took a few more glances without making a sound to inquire, standing quietly waiting for the master's orders. Ha, huh, a gust of Yin wind blew by, and the originally brightly lit courtyard suddenly plunged into a darkness that was nowhere to be seen. The servants panicked, and no one knew how the demonic wind blew out the lights in the yard, making them shiver in place. Light up! Mr. Xiao is used to seeing the big scene and still has some confidence in the eerie battle before him. With his command, the startled servants quickly pulled out the fire folder and started lighting the lights again. No matter how many times the candle is lit, whether it is long or short, it cannot be lit smoothly. The servants even hold the lantern in their arms, unable to light even one candle. Wu, the Yin wind once again passed by, and this time there seemed to be something more in this Yin wind. The people in the yard had their hair on end, and everyone seemed to have been cast a spell, staying motionless in place. When the Yin wind blew, General Xiao crouched down and hugged Su Qingtian's small body. With his two strong arms, one was his grandson and the other was his granddaughter. He felt sorry for anyone who was injured. Turning around and looking around at the frightened servant, the old man stood up and spoke loudly. Light the lights with red wax, come on. This confident low breath brought the servants back to their senses, and they immediately went to the warehouse to find a pile of red candles. In just a few seconds, they lit a candle fire. When the small courtyard regained its bright lights, everyone saw a spider-like black substance hovering on the roof. It slowly circles and continuously spits out fine threads downwards, with layers of black filaments tightly wrapping the entire room. Yusi seems to have her own life, trembling with every breath. Grandpa, this is the real reason why my cousin's high fever persists. The milky girl pointed at the terrifying creature, and the water spirit's big eyes looked fearlessly at the roof. It not only sucks on its cousin's longevity, but also on his cousin's luck. Even more eerie is that there is not only this evil creature in the entire Xiao mansion. The evil creatures on the roof, reflected by the orange candlelight, became even more terrifying. The servants huddled in the corner of the wall, and some wanted to run away, only to find that the courtyard door, which could have been easily accessed, could not be opened at this moment. A dozen or so people were trapped in this small courtyard without knowing why. At this moment, some people couldn't help but howl, while others sobbed softly, but most of them looked at their owners as if they were looking towards hope. The black mist spider also noticed the yellow talismans pasted inside and outside the house, and wanted to retract the tentacles it had scattered before fleeing. However, the power of the talismans was very strong, making it unable to move. The leaves rustled incessantly, and at the same time, the entire room began to shake. This was a sign of the black mist spider's anger, as it attempted to tear down the entire room, unable to retract its tentacles. The power of the evil creature was too great. General Xiao immediately placed Xiao Nan in Xiao Yi Chen's arms upon seeing the situation, 
and then drew a sword from the waist of the soldiers beside him, leaping forward and attacking the evil creature. Su Ching Tian never expected this grandfather, who was nearly sixty years old, to throw such bravery and decisiveness, but the opposite side was not something that ordinary people could kill. Mr. Xiao started wielding his knife and plunged straight into the center of the monster. In the next moment, the entire blade fell into place, causing him to lose his center of gravity and fall onto the roof. This monster has no substance. At the moment when the blade struck, the monster's body scattered like mist and immediately gathered. Although it did not strike, the black mist spider immediately counterattacked, splitting countless thin threads from the black mist, like strands of hair pouring down on Mr. Shao. In an instant, the originally empty sky was mostly covered by thin threads, giving a feeling of impending doom. When the soldiers saw their master being attacked, they disregarded their inner shock and rushed forward to break through the situation. The middle dot aged man in a green shirt drew his sword and rushed forward, but before he could even make a move, another dense strand of black hair rushed towards him, covering his face. The continuous attacks of two people completely angered the black mist spider, as it began to disperse its fine threads and attack the others in the courtyard. The black thread swam along a peculiar path, heading towards the scattered and screaming servants. Xiao Yi Chen protected Xiao Nan in his arms with one hand and quickly turned the wheelchair with the other to avoid the attack from the fine threads. Mr. Xiao, who was on the roof, was greatly shocked to see this scene. He didn't expect this monster to be so powerful. He yelled at Su Qing Tian, who was still standing in the courtyard, with a pale face. Girl, run quickly. Su Qing Tian originally intended to end this evil creature in a relatively gentle way. After all, as long as there are enough yellow talismans, the evil energy can be trapped in it, and it can dissipate on its own after two hours. This will not cause panic among the crowd, but also bring joy and relaxation. Unexpectedly, this evil spirit opened up a trace of spiritual intelligence. If left unchecked, everyone in this courtyard will be killed here. End of this chapter